Okay, how is that? There should be sound now. Thank you for telling me. Um, okay. No mic. Only piano. Oh, wait, you should be able to hear me now. Can you hear me? Okay. Got it. I think we should be good now. Okay, Happy New Year. Hopefully you can hear me. I'll keep a lookout. Uh, let me know in the chat if you can now hear me better. Good, good, good. Okay, perfect. All right, great. Yeah, I'm sure it's much better if you can actually hear what I'm saying. Uh, I don't think the lesson would go very well if you couldn't. So how's everybody doing? It's been a while, a couple of weeks at least. Uh, so happy to be back here with you again uh, with this uh, new year, 2019. I can't believe it. Um, really, really happy to be back, really excited, really enjoyed my break, and we're going to have a great lesson today. I can just feel it. Okay, um, I am doing well, everybody. Um, I hope you are doing well as well, and let's get the chat in here just to say hello to some people, and then we're going to get right on in the lesson. We have a lot to cover tonight, um, and we'll go from there. All good. Okay, hope you're doing well. We got the bird here. We got Jeremy back once again. Sinel, I believe, is new here. Welcome out. We got Mal74. Hector's back. Adria's back. Gary's back. So it looks like we got a lot of people back. Karen is with us once again. Awesome to see. Uh, we got Kevin Zhang. Hello, Kevin. Welcome out. I believe you've been here before, but you might be on the newer side. So uh, welcome out, everybody. Well, like I said, really, really excited to be here. We're going to have a terrific lesson today. Um, while some people are rolling in, you know, leave a comment if you want, um, especially if you're new. Always love to see the new students rolling in. Um, and thank you so much for the $10 super chat, Gary Cook. I didn't even do anything yet, and Gary has already given me a super chat. All right, so I am um, going to start up the Facebook live stream. It should take less than a minute or so. So just sit back, relax, get ready, and then we will get started. All right, just give me less than a minute or so. Hello students, your piano teacher Tim here, back with Piano Lessons on the Web. So if you're watching on Facebook and it's your first time here, make sure to like our page. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to uh, subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you get notified when we come out with new lessons, which is pretty much all the time. Um, off the top of my head, Saturdays and Sunday mornings, 9 a.m., and then we meet live Fridays and Sundays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. There, I didn't forget. So back after a couple of weeks into the new year, thank you so much for coming. If you don't know already, I am Tim, and I am the teacher in this space here. So, um, all right, let's get started here, and I'll we'll get on with the lesson. Let me get the intro ready. The struggle is real. There are so many lessons on YouTube about how to read music, but none about how or what you should be practicing to get better and master reading music. Well, your piano teacher Tim here today, and that's exactly what I'm going to show you. All right, here we go. Let me get this up on the screen. Okay, to, the first thing you want to do, obviously, is learn your notes on and off the staff. Um, if you don't know how to read music already, check out some of the lessons on the channel. I'll try to remember to put a link in the description for you. But if you type in how to read music and lessons on the web, it'll come up on YouTube. But I'm going to talk about how you can practice 
reading music. I have included a link to this in the description. Um, this is an exercise online. You can either do this or you can pick up a pack of flashcards. You can find these on Amazon. And there's actually a bunch in here, but the yellow ones are the ones you want really for reading music. And you just want to go through these again and again. A mistake a lot of students make is that they will learn how to read music and then they will stop practicing it thinking that, oh, I have it mastered already. I don't need to practice it anymore. Wrong. You need to keep practicing it on a regular basis or you'll get rusty really fast and it's something you want to practice for months. But let me show you um, this here. So there's musictheory.net slash exercises slash note. The very first thing you want to do is click on customize this exercise in the top right. And depending on how many notes you know, you want to select the range. You know, if you just know the notes on the staff, you want to select the range for on the staff. Um, you can choose uh, either to practice treble clef by itself, bass clef by itself, or both of them together called the grand staff. So I would start with treble clef, you know, work out treble clef for about five minutes, then spend five minutes on just bass clef, and then spend um, another five minutes maybe on the grand staff if you're just starting out. If you've been practicing it for a while, just spend five minutes on that grand staff. So here we go, we're gonna get started. Um, let's go through any of the other options we may or may not know. Um, accidentals, you know, uh, depends on whether you know those or not. That's just whether it's a sharp or a flat. And key signatures, I would honestly just click, yeah, the natural up here for the key signatures to start out with because that's not what we're practicing today. So what you wanna do is you want to do two things really. Um, you want to figure out, obviously, what letter note that is. And hopefully you know by now that bottom letter uh, is an E. So you can obviously click E here, and then it'll move on to the next example. But what I want you to do, what you have to do, is find the note on the keyboard as well. Because it's super-duper important that you not only understand where it is on the staff, but you can find these. And you want to be able to find them fast. So there you go. I clicked E. Next one, A. You want to find them as fast as possible. A. Uh, which one's that? Oops, I forgot to select that we're only doing on the staff for bass clef, so remember to figure that out in the uh, settings, but that's an F. Let's just do maybe one or two more. I think you get the idea. Um, D. Up here. I can do them really fast. If it takes you a little bit longer, don't worry about that at all. And then you got F here. So there you go. So you want to spend, like I said, um, five minutes on each cleft by itself and then five minutes on them together and then after you're doing it for a couple of months yes a couple of months you want to go through and do the just the grand staff all right let's get on to the next exercise Okay, let me get the next exercise up here for you guys. I do have these all in the description. Um, let me real quick check, make sure that everything is working. Yeah, Super Chat isn't available everywhere. Um, okay, all right, cool. So it looks like everything's still working great. I always like to check in because something breaks. I'd rather know sooner rather than later. Okay, um, yeah. Here we go. Oh, is this it? Yeah, here you go. The next thing you should be practicing, and this one gets even better, is intervals. Because if you remember from some of my other lessons, working on your intervals and learning to identify them from sight will help you read music probably 10 times faster, and I'm not even exaggerating. So let me show you on how and what you should be practicing for this one. Okay, so I have another website. It's also musictheory.net, uh, but it's slash exercises slash interval. Don't worry. I put a link in the description just for you. Um, yes, just you. Now, you want to, again, adjust your settings accordingly. You probably want to start maybe just on the staff. Then... You probably, starting out, want to just select this top option here with the natural sign. That means all these will be in the key of C. 
um, because you have to get a little bit more advanced at intervals to do anything else. Um, display mode, harmonic, huh? Oh, okay, so harmonic is when they're stacked up and down, like they are now. Melodic is when they are side to side. So I'll select the melodic, see how they're, you know, shifted off a little bit. So either one's fine. Honestly, you could even do both. Render quality. You know, starting out, I would turn that off. Because what that does is um, if you have render require quality, sorry, render quality. Um, what If you have that turned on, you're going to have to know whether it's a perfect fourth, perfect fifth, or major six, minor six. And I haven't talked about that a lot on the channel. I am going to make an update lesson for that. But if you're just starting out, turn that require quality off. And, um, yeah, I think this is probably pretty good. Okay, so if you know anything about intervals, and again, you want to be playing these on the piano so your brain lines up with what you're seeing on the staff with what's actually happening here. You see that if, if you ever see two notes like that and they're like side by side like that, that has to be a second because those notes are so close together that they have to move from side to side or else they would collide and the universe would entirely collapse. I'm not even kidding. So you've got B and C. You can read the notes separately if you want, but what I recommend is read the bottom note and then determine that the next note up is a second, meaning that it's right next to each other. Just to explain intervals really quick, distance between two notes. If you have a note in the next note, that's a second, one, two. If you have a note in the note up from there, that's a third. Note in the next note up, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and then octave, or an eighth, is also an acceptable term. All right, so we're going to hit second here. All right, next one. See how the bottom one's on a line? That happens to be B. And then there's a line with nothing written on it and then another line. Whenever you see that, that is always a fifth. It's actually also the same if it starts on a space. There's an empty space and then another space. So that's always a fifth. All right, see how that's stacked like a snowman? That's always going to be a third. So you got C and then E up there. Third, boom. Oh, what is that? It's a line and then another line. So that is also a third. It doesn't matter whether they're both lines or both spaces. One of the quick thing I want to mention is that all even intervals are don't match, meaning if the bottom is a line, the top will be a space. That's true for seconds, fourths, sixths, and octaves, and so forth. And now if they're odd, they will match, meaning that if the bottom's a line, the top will be a line. If the bottom's a space, top will be a space. So third here. Uh, how about this one? G, but read the bottom of G. And then they don't match, right? So you have a line on the bottom, space on the top. Is that an odd number interval or an even? That's even, right? Now what you want to do is just kind of determine how far apart they might be just glancing at it. Remember seconds are really, really close together. Fourths are a little bit up there. And then this is even a little bit wider at a sixth. All right, one more. All right, B to D. What is that? We've done that one before. That's a third, right? Looks like the beginning of a stacked snowman. They both match, indicating an odd number interval. Now, how should you practice these? Well, similar to the reading music, you want to be spending, um, I would be spending 10 minutes a day just on this. And actually, what you want to do is learn reading notes up and down on the staff first, the first exercise we did. Spend a few weeks on that. Get used to that first. Um, and you don't have to have it totally mastered. But after a few weeks, then be spending 10 minutes on this. So spending 10 minutes on the first one and then 10 minutes on this one. That's how you want to do it. Okay, well, let's get on to the next exercise, which is even more important and will even help you even more in the long run. Okay, um, let me get a couple of things up here for you guys. And let's do this. Perfect. Um, Okay, thank you very much, AVG. Now go away. Sorry, something popped up on my screen. Um, all 
Okay, site reading. If you've been following me for a while, you know how important this is. This is actually the number one skill that you can be learning and practicing on the piano. Not even kidding. So take a look here. I have included, obviously, a link in the description. That's the name of the game for today. And um, these are all sight reading exercises. Now, what is sight reading? Sight reading, as the name simply implies, is when you are reading a piece of sheet music that you've never read before. Now, some quick tips on sight reading. Number one, read something that's a little bit below your current playing level. Maybe not too, too easy, but you definitely don't want to try sight reading things that you're, you're, it, that's currently at your playing level and certainly not things that are above because that defeats the whole point. The whole point, which is point number two, is to get through the example making as little mistakes as possible. You're gonna make mistakes, it's gonna happen, but you want to really focus on getting the right notes, the right rhythms, if possible. And uh, point number three is when you go through these, let me just kind of bring these up. These are really easy ones. These are the first ones you wanna start out with if you're new and uh, maybe you've been reading music for a couple of weeks. Um, so you wanna go through these and you want to first, before you even start playing, take a look at the the key signature which is what well it has one flat right in this one um, it helps if you know your key signatures a little bit but they don't get real hard um, really so one or two sharps at the maximum you want to be looking out for any dynamics that's how loud you're playing and there aren't any in this example like i said this starts out real easy you want to um, kind of determine your the your opening hand position you know, the hand position where you're starting out so you can start out in the right place. So you want to be spending a little bit of time even before you start playing, analyzing the piece, the little exercise rather. And then, um, you know, so it gives you the best chance of making as few mistakes as possible. Okay, let me read my notes here so I make sure I cover everything here. There's more I want to say about this. Okay. All right, another point I want to make is that you want to play through these twice. One as a genuine sight read. And then again, to correct any mistakes that you may have made. So say, Right there, I clearly made a mistake. It just didn't sound right. So on my second playthrough, or before I even do my second playthrough, I'm making a mental note on where that mistake happened. And on the second playthrough, I'm gonna do my best to correct that mistake. Now, should you play it any more than that? Well, it's up to you. But I recommend playing it at least twice. Um, one is a sight read, one to correct mistakes. Okay, if you're liking the lesson, let me try it again. Okay, if you're liking the lesson so far, make sure to slam that like button because it would really, really help me out. Leave a comment because uh, that also helps me out. All right, let's get on to the assignment and then I'm going to take some student questions that I asked you on social media about reading music. Okay, your assignment is simple. It's to do the exercises that I have presented to you today in the order in which I have presented them. So first you wanna start with the note reading exercise. Like I said, spend a few weeks on that. Then you want to practice the intervals, but you also want to be practicing the note reading exercise as well. So it's more of a layered approach. You're starting with one thing, then you're adding another while keeping the first thing. And then you're gonna add that say you're reading after a few weeks of practicing your intervals. All of those are really, really important. Now the question is, do you ever stop practicing those? Um, yeah, you will actually. I mean, the, the first two, the intervals and the note reading one, after months, maybe even years, you will actually have it down to where you're getting them super lightning quick and that's where you wanna be with these. You don't wanna get them like be able to go, okay, that's a fifth and you know, you're getting them real slow. That's not good enough. You don't 
only need to just know it. You need it ba, 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 really, really, really fast. Okay. Um, trying to think if there's anything I want to say more on the assignment. Oh, yeah. Sight reading, though. Sight reading is something you should always constantly be practicing no matter how good you are, no matter if you're good as me or if you're way better than me, you're the best piano player in the world. You need to be sight reading on a regular basis. Um, you can, uh, you, there are actually a lot of examples on the website I gave you because there's easy examples and then there's intermediate, a few levels of those and there's difficult ones. So there's a lot to keep you there. Um, a church hymnal's a great place to find good sight reading examples because they involve a lot of playing between chords. Let me get just the piano here. You know, things like that with simple melodies. So that's a really good idea as well. You can find those online. Those are actually easier to find in book form, I find, which is kind of strange, but you know, that's another example there. And then what you can do also is you can open up piano books, lesson books that are a little bit below your level and sight read through entire pieces. Okay. Okay, I asked you on social media, I asked you on the channel and Facebook if you had any questions about note reading. And we did get some on here on YouTube. So let's take a look at those. All right, everybody. Give me a minute here. A lot of you smash that like button. Thank you. All right. Give me just a few more seconds here, guys. And gals, of course, can't forget. Okay, so on my community tab, I said, you know, the live stream happening tonight. What questions do you have about note reading? And we have the th following three questions. Uh, the first question is by Sinel1. How far ahead do you read sh the sheet music? And this is a very good question because this is something I haven't talked about a lot on the channel. Now, ideally, you should actually, believe it or not, be reading half a measure to a full measure ahead of where you are on the sheet music. And you may be thinking like I did when my piano teacher told me this was, how is that possible? Like, like what? <laughs> like you can do that? And yeah, you can. Now I'm gonna be totally honest with you. When I'm reading a piece of sheet music that's difficult for me, I cannot do this because I'm concentrating so hard on getting the right notes right where I am in the piece. But if it's a piece that um, you're, it's a little bit below your level or it's something you've been practicing for a while, ideally, yes, it's true. You should be reading um, a little bit, like I said, half a measure, like two to four beats ahead of where you actually are. That will actually allow you to look, um, it will help you read music better because you'll actually be looking ahead a little bit and you'll be able to see the things coming ahead. Now you have to be pretty good to do this. Like I said, I even struggle with it, um, but it'll allow you to be able to um, process things ahead of time. All right, next question. Hello, the next question is by Rachie Adeline, who says, I've noticed a lot of songs are just chords broken up and played in different orders in different places. So true. Sometimes on a song sheet, it will say F minor above a group of notes, but it won't always be exactly like an F minor chord, F, A flat, C, in that order. It will sometimes be arranged F, C, A flat, or sometimes it will repeat one note over and over again. Okay, and then the question is, is in your opinion, is it useful to have that and use it in sheet music? Um, I think you might have been uh, meant to say, is it useful to know that and use it in sheet music? I, I know it helps me a bit to read the, let's keep going here, music better 
but sometimes it's confusing. So I kind of mostly understand this question. I apologize if I get it wrong, but I, what you're talking about and um, discussing here is the idea of intervals where notes don't always appear as standard chords um, like this. Hold on. <laughs> there we go. So say you have a C major chord, C, E, and G. A lot of times in music, it'll appear out of order, E, G, C. So those are just chord inversions. Those are the same chords. They are just in a different order. One thing I recommend you do, and by the way, the answer is yes. It is very useful to know this information. What I recommend you do is go through, I have a lesson on YouTube, um, how to play all the chords on piano or something like that. But if you type that in in lessons on the web, it should show up. And uh, what you want to do is you want to learn all your chords, all your majors, minors, diminished, augmented, so forth. But even more importantly so, is you want to learn how they're spelled. And by spelled, I don't mean C-H-O-R-D. I mean the three letters that make up each chord, C, E, and G. Because if you know that, right, it doesn't matter whether you're reading it as an inversion or not. I'm still seeing G, C, and E. Well, there's only one chord in the whole history of chords that that could fit and that's a C major chord so by knowing the three notes that they make up even if it appears in an inversion you'll know what chord is being played and these are really really useful this is actually another technique beyond uh, even intervals beyond um, sight reading uh, well maybe not beyond sight reading but you know on the same levels as those because you'll see that in your sheet music and you'll identify it immediately. Oh, that's an F major chord or F minor chord in second inversion. So make sure to spend the time as well to learn your chords. I could have even included it in this lesson, but I felt like it might have been out of the scope a little bit. But great question, and the answer is, um, yeah, you can read music a lot better using chords. Okay, final question. I'll be out, but we'll see it all tomorrow. Okay, Anne, thank you. And by, this, by the way, this is by Anne Benson. Uh, moving from chord progressions to sheet music is a big step, I agree. Share your experience. Some exercises would be fine, Anne. Okay, so chord progressions. Um, back to the piano here. All a chord progression is is like a pattern of chords commonly used in a, sh uh, in a piece of music. And after you learn your chords, learning about chord progressions is really helpful because you'll find that there are some chord progressions that are literally used, and this isn't just clickbait, they're literally used in thousands and thousands and thousands of songs. There are videos out there about this. So by learning, say, like the 1-4-5 progression, that will really help you when you see these, which is an inevitability you're really going to be able to pick those out right away and play them. Okay, I have an exercise for you that I found. Let me bring it up on the screen. I have included it in the description. Okay. Okay, so what should you be practicing to master this sort of thing? Well, cadence patterns. You want to be, um, I actually have a sheet here I found that works pretty well, and it actually has them for all keys. It is the most common chord progression in music. It is mixed up a little bit, but it's mixed up in a way where you'll you'll see this um, a lot. So one, or C major, F major, all C slash G means is the C chord with G at the bottom, G7, C. That's also known as a one, four, one five seven one progression I know it's a mouthful but if you don't understand the theory behind it that's fine just go through and practice these because even having the muscle memory you will be able to play these when they come up in your music which by the way what percentage of the time or what percentage likelihood do you think it is that you're gonna see these well I can tell you right now that percentage is a hundred percent so you definitely need to be practicing these like i said i'm going to put a link in the description for just just for you okay everybody there's more um let me check in real quick with the chat make sure everything is running smoothly and not 
crashing all over the place. Um, okay. And by the way, anybody who's uh, just chiming in, I'm not ignoring you. I will um, go through at towards the end and check out to see if you guys have any questions. But it looks like you guys are helping each other in the chat, which I encourage 500%, which isn't even possible. But, you know, today's the first day back, so we're going to do 500%. Okay. Uh... Let's see what we got next. We do have more stuff. Okay, great. It's quiz time. Quiz time. You all love quizzes, right? You missed them from school? I know I do. Okay. Mm, just looking through the quiz questions here. Okay, it's quiz time. And the point of this is, is that if you can answer all these questions correctly, you understand pretty well the main concepts of what we're talking about and you can probably move on to the next one the next lesson if you can't you need to watch the lesson again or parts of the lesson again to be able to find the correct answer i'm not going to give them to you here but they are in the lesson somewhere question one when you're reading sheet music should you aim for accuracy or should you aim for speed accuracy or speed or both that's a, that's another correct answer do you shoot for accuracy speed or both question number two it's important to understand the distances between notes and be able to read them to read music effectively what is that called the distances between notes Uh, a question like 2B that I actually don't have written down here, but I think is interesting that I, I briefly mentioned. If the notes um, are stacked up and down, the distances, or they are stacked like one, one at a time, one, and then one over here. So basically vertically or horizontally, what is that called? What is it called when they're stacked vertically? And what is it called when they're stacked horizontally? Actually, I'll give you... Um, no, I th I th I'm pretty sure I gave you both of those in the lesson. If I didn't, let me know in the comment, and then I'll, t I'll tell you. Question number three. How often should you sight read? And but part B to that question, should you ever, ever stop sight reading ever? Okay, those are the three questions. If you can answer them, great. If you can't, you got to go back and watch again. All right, I have one more section here before I just kind of get into the community part where I just kind of talk over with you guys and see how you're doing with the lesson. Um, okay. Ba -ba -ba. Okay, great. So where should you go from here? Well, the first thing you want to do is you want to smash that subscribe button. You want to turn and hit that bell, that notification bell, to get notified when we have new lessons coming out, which is pretty much all the time. So you don't want to miss a beat. So after this, you should go and watch this playlist on how to read music better. But I also have another playlist here on where we practice reading notes together. So that's a perfect place to go right after you watch this one. This has been your piano teacher, Tim, here with another amazing piano lesson. And I'll check you out in the next one. Thank you so much. All right, I'm still here. I wanted to do that. That's an outro for like when I piece the video together. I'm not leaving it. I know I'm going to get a lot of comments that are like, good night, everybody. Good night, guys. Good night, guys. All right. But we're here. We're here. We're here. Okay. Let's see here. Let's get into the uh, chat here. Okay, I don't see any questions about what we've talked about, which is fine. That's great, actually. That means everybody uh, was, with, was with me the whole time. And it looks like a lot of the questions I um, asked or that you had 
were answered by other people, which I'm so thankful for. That's one thing I want to tell you right now. I encourage helping each other probably more than anything, even more than subscribing and uh, going to my uh, you know website or anything else, is uh, to help each other on the channel in the comments, um, wherever. I love, love, love to see that camaraderie and um, that really makes it, you know, solidifies the fact that we're in a virtual classroom together. We're not just, you know, miles and miles apart. I mean, I know we are, but we are connected by this channel. And I think uh, helping each other is an amazing way to prove that, you know, we're all in this classroom together helping each other learn. Okay, how's everybody doing? Did you guys follow it okay? Um, let's see, question, would a tool app like Piano Marvel be helpful with sight reading? I've heard mixed things about Piano Marvel. Um, it's free, okay, if it's free, you know, I, I would say it's not a bad idea to check it out if it's free. If you don't like it, then you really didn't waste anything except your time, but um, at least you wouldn't have wasted any money on it. Um, okay. Usually yes, but you want to do both. Yeah, go through the examples that I gave you as well. Um, I did put a link in the description. It's belmont.edu something. If you type in sight reading piano into Google, it will come up. Um, there's another one called, oh, there's another website. I believe it costs a little bit of money. It's called sightreadingfactory.com. That one's good. Um, the, the only drawback to that one is it like randomly generates these passages of music for you, which is fine. That's kind of what you want for a while. But after a while, you want to start sight reading examples that are more like um, real pieces of music. Oh, I have an ex I have a resource for you guys. I mentioned this in a lesson, excuse me, a while ago. Let me get this, excuse me, burp. Um, let me get this up for you. Uh, let's see. Okay, this collection of pieces. Now, you want to be a little bit more well-versed in sight reading before you do this. You want to do the first set of exercises I gave you. But this is called Cherney's Exercises in Passage Playing. These are really short little tidbits. They're actually really fun to play. And they are great for sight reading. They were great for two-handed playing. As you can see, they're a little bit more complicated for sure. But the good thing is that they're repetitive. So once you kind of get the pattern down, um, you'll be able to play them a bit easier. And um, I've just been going through these. I actually need to resume them. There are tons of these. Like I don't know how many in total, but I feel like probably a hundred, at least 100. No, 125. It says it on top. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm going to give you a link to these. The thing to understand about this link is this website has this weird block on it, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna post the link, and what's gonna happen is if you click on the link, it's gonna say access denied. So what you want to do is you want to go to where I posted the link. You want to, sorry somebody posted before I get to it. You want to right click, and then you want to click copy link address, or you want to just copy it the normal way you do, it, and then paste it up into your address bar up here and then paste it and then it will work. I know it's really weird, but that's what you want to do. <laughs> Thanks guys, I really need to get back into it because I'm doing a music degree. Wow, voice is my first instrument. That is amazing. I'm so happy to hear that, Kelly Marie. Um, by the way, I believe you're on the newer side here in the classroom, so welcome. Everybody welcome out Kelly Marie. Um, that is amazing. Good for you. It's not easy getting a music degree, I know. Uh, there was lots and lots of days, geez, I would get up like 6 a.m. and be in the practice room at like 6.30. I, w I wouldn't even take a shower first I mean, because it's college. It's like, who cares? I mean, yeah, you, you later on in the day, you want to smell nice, but like at 6.30 in the morning, who cares? Uh, but anyway, I, w I would get in there so early. I don't mean to b brag or whatever. <laughs> This isn't even really bragging, but I would get in there so early that, like, they had these automatic lights that would turn on. And then I guess after, like, a half hour, an hour of inactivity, they would shut off. But I would be in there so early that they would turn on, like, for the first time uh, walking through. It was a kind of a cool, 
was kind of a cool time. Like, I, I, I remember at the time, though, I felt like I was being beat, beat, beat up by it. I, I don't mean to scare you, Kelly Marie. But, like, looking back on it, it is honestly, like, one of the best times of my life in a way. Like, actually, in a way, this is the best time of my life. So I'm, I'm serious about that. Like, I really love where I am right now. Um, with everybody here and, and having the channel and, and teaching and it's it, and running my own business and um, you know I, have to, I don't have to put up with going to a, an actual job I just had to put up with YouTube which is its own kind of set of challenges but um, I love this now um, probably more than that but I have very fond memories of music school so um, really enjoy it while it lasts and don't be scared when you're getting out of music school and you panic like like I did. And I was like, man, what am I going to do? Like, like, am I going to be able to get a job? Is like everything going to be okay? Am I going to stop learning? That's the one thing I was seriously, it sounds silly, but I was seriously worried about when I finished music school was, will I keep learning? And it's so funny because I've learned more now being out of music school. I probably learned more in the past year. Um, maybe not specifically just about music, but just about everything, life in general, the business, YouTube, everything, e even some music stuff. Um, and it's amazing like that I learn more and more every year. So that was kind of like an unfound fear. I think some people do fall into that where they don't have somebody telling them when something's due or, or when to turn something in. They, they don't have the motivation to do that. Um, luckily, I have trained myself at least to get to the point where I can um, do things on my own. Okay, let's continue here. Enough talking about me and self-gratification. <laughs> Jeremy, I'm glad you to know Tim. You are awesome. Thank you very much, Jeremy. I appreciate that. And Andy says you are awesome. Thank you so much. Hey, all. Real Wednesday fans here. Andy, a.k.a. Andy is here. Uh, made it just, I guess, missed the lesson, though. Yeah, you just missed the lesson. It actually was a longer lesson today because I really put a lot of work into these. I have a new work schedule now that I made for myself where it's going to be a lot more efficient, and it's also going to give me more time off, although you're not going to notice on your end because just as many videos are going to come out. My goal for this year is, was, I don't know, I don't know if I really believe in New Year's resolutions because to me, a New Year's resolution kind of implies that it's temporary because a lot of people don't keep them. But my goal for this entire year, um, at least in the beginning of the year, to get on and then finish out the year is to be as consistent with the live streams as possible. Now, things will happen. You know, my internet might be out or something might happen with the computer or whatever. But I'm really, really going to make an effort to be here if possible. So if I have a little bit of a cold, a little bit under the weather, I'm still going to show up. Still going to do it. Um, and But I do want to tell you that um, having the time off here was nice because it really got me um, relaxed. It really helped me to think more creatively about the channel again. It really made me want to make lessons uh, more than really ever before, you know, taking that little bit of time off. So what I decided to do is I will take off once a quarter. So that means, you know, January, like we just did, Probably again in March or April. I'll let you know ahead of time. Um, again in um, like June or July, in the middle of the summer, then probably right before the fall starts. Um, and then once again, you know, as the year transitions. Because I think having that little bit of time off in those intervals is really, really going to help me out. But I'm really, really going to, um, you know, make an effort to be as consistent as possible. By the way, I have some announcements coming up. Um, here in our last um, quarter here of the lesson. So check out that. But I do want to get to Kelly Marie because she posted something very interesting to me, which I really um, am sorry to hear. Um, Kelly Marie says, I want to do it to become a music therapist. That's great. That's great. Uh, when my late husband went through chemo the chemotherapy with, for cancer, I saw so many despondent hearts. I know what you mean about the difficulty. Um, yeah, um, I definitely relate to you on the, the cancer thing. Um, my mom, uh, two years ago passed away from cancer and then my uncle passed away from cancer. Um, he was supposed to make it though, or he was supposed to have like a really good prognosis though. Um, he passed away like a year ago from right now, um, in February. 
And I also lost other family members. Like that was the one of the most difficult years of my life was 2017, in the early 2018, because uh, I lost a um, total of five five family members if you include my cat that I have for 19 years, which I had since I was like in fifth grade, <laughs> which is crazy. But anyway, um, not to bring everything down, but I I can definitely relate to that and how music, like like one thing that really got me through that time was the YouTube channel and teaching music. Um, you know, a lot of people like listening to music. They like playing music. And I do like those things. But to me, like teaching, um, I, I just love that part of it. And that's what I spend a lot of time doing. Um, that, that might mean that I'm not going to be a, a concert-level pianist and be the best in the world. But hey, you know what? You got to pick what you're good at, what you like to do in life. And uh, it's been quite a good journey. And um, it's really helped me out in... Um, you know, in life. So I, I have all youth to thank for that. I mean, I, like I say all the time, I know I did a lot of the hard work, but, um, you know, I appreciate it. Annie Chaplin gave us, gave me a five, five dollar, $20 Australian super chat. Thank you so much for that. I really, really appreciate that. Thank you so much for the work you put in every, uh, in for everyone. Very appreciated. Thank you so much, Annie uh, Chaplin. Thank you so, so much. Uh, let's see. I feel so bad. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Uh, Gary says, Tim, I can't believe it's been two years already. Yeah, I know. Isn't that crazy? Like you, A lot of you probably remember when that happened because um, I was very vocal about it on the channel um, because I like to be as open as I can about things. The one thing I will not talk about on the channel at all, hopefully ever, is politics because politics has no place on this channel. It, honestly, it doesn't matter what I am in terms of uh, political, or whatever. Um, this is all about focusing on, um, you know, piano. But I do like to let you guys know what's happening with me. Uh, one, because I feel like um, us forming that relationship together, like you know me, will help you actually learn from me. It sounds kind of weird, but it's true. Like, like if you know me well and you're, you watch a new video of mine, you're like, oh, you know, I really feel like I, I know Tim. I've spent time with him. I know what he's been through. Um, it will actually help you pay attention to the lesson better. At least I'm convinced of that. <laughs> so I do try to let you guys in uh, whenever I can. But, yeah, it's been two years. I can't believe it either if it's a flash, honestly. Okay. Um... I'm so sorry. It's a hard thing to go through. Yeah, it really is. It really is hugs. Thank you so much. I didn't mean to bring you down. Sorry. No, you didn't bring me down. It's fine. Yeah, cancer is one of the most evil things out there. He passed six years ago. Okay. Yeah, one thing I, I notice about it, um, and I'll get back to music here in a second, I promise, is um, things... Like, it never goes away completely, but each year that goes by, uh, it does get a little bit easier, even though I'm about to cry here, but um, it, do, it does get easier. It doesn't, it doesn't, my dad always says it, it doesn't get better, but it does get easier, which is kind of a strange thing to say, but if you ever go through it, you'll know uh, what I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> Back to um, what I wanted to announce to you guys of like what's coming up, what you should be on the lookout for coming up, um, and kind of like what my plans are with the channel coming into the new year. Because I did have a lot of time to think about, you know, what I want to do and the, a different direction I want to take. Because every year I like to um, slowly reinvent the channel in a way. Like change direction a bit. I didn't do that the first few years. I just kind of was stuck in a rut. But I like to change things up. As you can see, actually, I changed up my background a bit. I filled in, first of all, I got this shelf organizer thing. And I filled it up with music-related items that represent the channel. Um, this little box here, right here, actually does stuff. You'll see in a future video. The unfortunate thing was I turned it on right before the live stream. And it was like dead battery. So I need to recharge it. Um, you'll see what that does soon enough. But I got lights behind me. They do change color. Maybe I'll show you that at the end, or maybe each time I'll change it into a different color. 
um, but that's not the most important thing. But <laughs> just to show you that I've been working on the more fun things, but I like to reinvent things as they go along. But it's actually going to show up in the content as well. As you can tell, even from today, I had a little more fun with the intro. Um, and I'm going to be doing that. I'm, I want to have more fun with the videos and I want to make them more entertaining. But I never want the entertainment value to overcome the learning piano value. So that's always going to come first. But I, but you are going to notice as the year goes on, I'm probably going to have more and more fun with the videos. I'm going to transition into more of a, a, an entertaining style, like I said, without being overpowering to where it's being taking precedent. But anyway... Um, going over the calendar of what we're talking about, uh, you know what we're talking about today. So Sunday on the 13th, we're meeting again, which is great pian sounding piano pieces that aren't impossible and fun to play. I highly recommend you check that one out. Um, it, the, the, the title says it all, honestly. Uh, next Friday we're meeting, by the way, we are back to every Friday, every Sunday again before we were doing every other week because I was uh, burned out, but I'm doing really good now. Um, and, you know, I was moving, so it kind of added to it, but I'm feeling great now and, and settled in. Um, the next Friday, next Friday, we're going to, it's the five things you should look for before you start sight reading a piece. That one's really important too. So it's related to what we talked about today with the sight reading, but exactly what you should be looking out for. And then it's classical pieces that are great for beginners. I spent a lot of time and care on this one to make sure that I included uh, a good amount of pieces that I have never talked about before on the channel rather than the standard prelude and C. I, I think that one is in there, but it's it's like only one of them and it's in the middle. But I have a lot of different um, stuff you might not know about. And then Friday, um, I actually really need to record this video. <laughs> to, to announce this but the, fr the Friday on the 25th things are um, gonna get really cool because that's such a weird thing to say but anyway th it's gonna be a really cool lesson because it's gonna be the student showcase number one now what is this about I guess I can announce it now um, so you can kind of get your recordings ready the student showcase is uh, where you're gonna send me recordings of you playing of course it's completely optional you don't have to show your face you can just show your hands you can record it it doesn't matter what the quality is you can record it on your phone your tablet your um, you know your electronic device of any kind would do and what I want you to do is I want you to send that recording to me either through my email Tim at lessons on the web com or um, on Facebook, if you go to the Facebook page, you can send me a message. I'll make sure to activate that button, but you can send me a message and um, basically send me a link there as an attachment. Or you can upload it to YouTube and send me a, uh, a link to that. But anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect these over the next few weeks. We'll see how many we get by the 25th. It might be a shorter one. And I'm going to review them on the channel. Like I said, if you don't want to show your face or tell us who you are, that's fine. I do recommend you give me a name. Um, it can be a made-up name if you want. It can be your screen name. Uh, screen name is such an old thing, but it can be your moniker. It can be anything. Just so we have a name to put with who's playing. And what what I mean by review is I'm going to play the piece you know, as the recording here on the stream. And then I'm going to give you some ways you can improve, maybe three to five things. I'm going to tell you what I liked about it as well. I'm not just going to rip you apart. Um, but I think this is going to be a great thing for one, for you to get feedback from me. I'm usually the one giving to you, you know, the other way around. I'm usually the one playing for you. So um, I think that would be interesting. Um, and I think a lot of you are going to get a lot out of it, even if you don't and you're not comfortable with submitting anything to me just by watching these videos and watching me review other people play, I think you're going to get an idea of what maybe you're doing wrong and maybe how you can improve. So I think this is going to be a great series. We'll see how many submissions we get. I did have some people tell me they were interested. I know Rich is probably down. I can probably even, if, if he gives me the okay, I can probably just grab a video off his YouTube channel um, and, and go from there. But that's what we're going to do then. And then Sunday, that Sunday, kind of a different kind of thing. It's a new series called Piano Theory. And what this is, is I've taught you about piano. I've taught you about music theory. And this is combining them together. I'm going to actually show you 
how I'm going to teach you theory concepts, but I'm also going to literally show you how that applies to um, piano and how that can help you because a lot of people miss that connection. Okay, uh, let's see here. Adria says, will you ever do any bloopers or how takes your channel? I knew some channels do that. Um, what are you talking about, Adria? I've never said anything stupid on this channel or, or messed up in any possible way. I don't get it. No, I'm just kidding. I, I, I'm sure if I look through my videos, I could do that. Honestly, it would take a long time. And um, to, to go through like all the videos I've made. But... Like, per video, I don't mess up enough. This is going to be a really egotistical thing to say, but I don't mess up enough to make a blooper reel. As you can see from the lesson we had tonight, I didn't really misspeak much at all. Like, I didn't really... Maybe when we first did the live streams, like a couple of years... Three three years ago, I think we've been live streaming. Um, I did do a lot then. I did a lot of messing up and, and weird bloopers and stuff like that. Um, been learning, um, I can never pronounce this right, Nas, Nasian number one, uh, that sounds great, but is relatively easy, you know, I might have to put that in, um, that's pretty cool, that, you are right on that one, that one's not too bad, love the unit with the ornaments, thank you so much, Kelly M, Kelly Marie, sorry, um, Okay, from Iran, thank you. All right, well, welcome out. I can't read that language, but you'll have to excuse me for that. Uh, okay, it's 1.53, ooh, in the UK. And what time does that make where you are? It is 8.57 p.m. for me here. Or I guess by the time you read it, or back when you wrote it, it was 8.53. In Pan okay, so it's the same time in Panama. Uh, I'm excited. Are there any slots left, uh, or has no one done it yet? I assume the bird you're talking about, the student showcase. Um, the student showcase, yeah, nobody's submitted yet, and there aren't a, a limited number of slots. The only stipulation is only one submission per student per month. So if you want to submit once this month for the end, for when I review it at the end of January, you can submit again for me to review at the end of February. And only one piece per student for or per submission. Uh, can I do a video off my YouTube channel? Yes. It doesn't have to be brand new. Nope. Am I allowed to ask what your channel name? Oh, okay, you're probably talking to somebody else because you know my channel name, Karen. <laughs> Uh, yes, Tim, you're way more polished now than two years ago. <laughs> smooth here, smooth operator. I know it, man. I know it. Um, even like a year ago, I, I watched a live stream I did like last February and I couldn't believe like what a difference there is, you know, not to toot my own horn or anything. Um, okay. Um, before I get to some more comments, more questions, we're having a really good, um, you know, discussion get together here. I want to tell you about something because there's only a limited time left to take advantage of this thing I'm going to tell you about. And some of you know already what I'm going to say, but you know, got to get it in because it ends like in three days. Okay. All right, if you like the lessons over here on the channel, you love the content I put out, you're really going to love the courses I have over on my website, pianolessonsontheweb.com. I have over 20 courses designed to help you not only just learn piano, but music theory, improvisation, rhythm, sight reading, ear training, and pretty much anything else I felt you would need to be a well-rounded musician. This is all the same stuff I learned to become the piano player that I am. So whether you are a beginner looking for a solid foundation to build on or you know quite a bit already and you're looking to take your existing skills to that next level, you want to check out these courses. There's definitely a lot they can offer you. You're going to um, learn, master, learn, practice, and master the topics rather than 
YouTube where we just kind of learn something and move on because you're going to get access to instructional videos with these each course includes instructional videos notes worksheets and sheet music and um, even some other things as well so it's really like if you took a college course on something right you, you learn a topic but then you read about it you have like a section of reading and then you practice it somehow like there's some sort of activity going on and then of course with piano you're going to be playing um, for a lot of this stuff okay just going through here you can read um, some of these other you know um, features on your own of course you can contact me with any questions whether it be about the website the courses or um, learning the materials what I get most of the questions about and I'd be more than happy to help answer them for you and um, yeah, one thing I want to tell you about, also the really reason I'm bringing this up, is that the holiday sale, which was kind of an extended sale, it went on for a while, it's ending on January 14th, so only a few more days. I might extend it one day just in case you know some people forget, but uh, but not much because it's already been a long sale as it is. So January 14th, that's just like in three days from now. These are some of the largest discounts of the year. And uh, it's on all the courses and course packs. So you can sign up for courses individually by going to the music courses page here. Or you can scroll down here and check out the course packs where you can get a collection of courses together for a much lower price. It's also easier to follow, I find, because you can, uh, you know, obviously if you're a beginner and you're new to my stuff or maybe you want a good review, you click on the beginners pack and you take the courses in this order here and you know it's pretty easy to follow and actually also I want to mention you can click on any course it'll take you to the course description page you can see what it covers what what pieces you're going to be learning the general rule of thumb on how long it'll take but it really depends on on who you are and how fast you learn so um, go through if you want and check out what each course covers and one more thing I want to mention about this is that there's a satisfaction guarantee, so a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you are unsatisfied for whatever reason, maybe you find out it's not for you, um, don't worry. Just email me, and I'd be more than happy to refund your money 100%. So remember, only three days left. Go to pianolessonsontheweb.com and to see what my courses can offer for you. Okay, back, back, back again. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I want to mention here before we go. Let's, um, Arturo's here. He says, hello, Master. Hello, Arturo. So glad you could come with us. Thanks for the time checks. Uh, means I can be uh, here on time. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, there is one more thing I want to tell you about is if you go to my website and you click on community at the top, there you can fill out this form and you're gonna get an email reminder 30 minutes before we meet. So that's a, a decent amount of time to get reminded, be like, oh yeah, we are meeting tonight. And uh, I'll give you a link to follow as well so you can find us real easy. And then if you scroll down, you can see the calendar that I was talking about a little bit earlier. Okay, sorry, when is this my stream cut out? Uh, when is what, the um, the student showcase? It's towards the end of the month. Okay, let's see. Thanks, Karen. Okay, just kind of looking. <laughs> Adrian says, yeah, bummer, you're too professional for bloopers and outtakes, which is, um, yeah, I just couldn't find one in one lesson. I'm sure if I went through a lot of lessons, I could find them, but yeah, I am used to doing it. One thing that helps me, too, is that um, I teach a lot. I teach every day pretty much, um, except when we were on break here, like like in person. I have, I have students in the local area I drive to and teach. So I'm teaching all the time. So that means like a lot of this stuff is already well rehearsed. You know, I've, I've taught it within the last you know few weeks, few months. There are some things that I'm doing that are new 
that I haven't talked about in a long time or ever that, you know, I do have to practice a little bit ahead of time. But thank you for those kind words. Not very often one sees something um, of Leopold Mozart. Looking forward to checking that one out. Probably the last thing I'll do before shutting down tonight. The Burt 101 says, yeah, it was a little piece I did in the summer. I'm not interested in classical pieces, but now I'm learning Moonlight Sonata. Perfect. So the Bird 101. Send me, um, you know, either in Facebook, email me, Tim at LessonsOnTheWeb.com. Um, you know, your, the name of your channel, I'm sure. I mean, I could follow it right now. But specifically tell me what lesson you want me to review. You might have contacted me. Some One of you contacted me on Facebook a couple months ago, and I said to hold off because um, I wasn't ready for it yet. But um, yeah, get in contact with me again. All right, everybody. I think that's good for tonight. I was so excited to come back and, and learn with you again. Like I said, taking the break works wonders. And um, more great things to come. I'll see you just in two days here on Sunday. I hope that you'll come and join us. Remember to subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Because um, without it, YouTube won't let you know when I upload. And that would not be fun. Um, all right, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. You guys really are awesome. And I really appreciate you. And you have a great night. It's been your piano teacher, Tim, here. And I'll see you in that next lesson. All right, good night, everybody. See you Sunday, same time.